is like I say, this is the actual organ that I composed uh, Ghost Town on. It was, um, it's actually a Yamaha home organ, you know, it's not the kind of thing that would be normally used in a, a rock band, but um, we were a rock band, so that's all right. And um, it's, you know, it's a home organ. I was really into la lounge and music and stuff, you know, uh, a very early age. And um, so the sounds came from here. I mean, the, the famous one is the clarinet sound, if I can get it, which is that one, which is... Ghost Town, like I say, was the the uh, C minor with the diminished chord. Let's start again. stuck you see I got the two chords the D and then I spent a year trying to find the third chord you know while we were touring I was going crazy and eventually I just gave up and stayed on that chord so it went and that was Eureka you know that was the song finished but I did I was you know messing around with those Less trying to find the, the lost third chord for ages and ages, and then I just stayed on that E major. The lyrics normally, once you've got an idea, they come pretty quick, you know, so it's just um, adding the. It's, I always take the time over the, the tune and then do the, fit the lyrics in. Well, no, that's not true, but in the later songs, I got more into the instrumental side. Even Free Nelson Mandela, I wrote the tune first. <laughs> not many people know that. But, um. <laughs> well, it was the whole mood, you know, it was, we were touring around. Um, it was about Coventry as well, it was about, but it wasn't just about Coventry, you know. I, when I write a song, I take elements of different um, places. It's like um, Dawning of a New Era was a song I did. The um, It mentions Area 3. That was an actual area in Chelmsley Wood in Birmingham. Area 3. and um, But the doormat that I slept on <laughs> was in Hillfields in Coventry. So, what, you know, the, the songs aren't about a... a um, a specific town, you know, there are bits of, I mean, uh, in particular, the Boomtown line in the uh, chorus was definitely about Coventry, because Coventry had been a, a real Boomtown in the 60s and early 70s, and it was, you know, a lot of the heavy industries were closing down. You know, I was very influenced by music in the 60s and stuff, and, you know, that idea of sort of um, changing the world or whatever was always a part of it, you know, part of my, uh, why I, I wrote songs and stuff. Um, I don't know, I suppose I put things in songs that, um, how would I put it, that, that you wouldn't want to say in normal life, whether it's in, uh, you know, about a relationship or something. Um, you know, you, sometimes you can put things into a song that aren't uh, acceptable to say. It's like, you wouldn't really walk down the, the street and go, hmm, this town's coming like a ghost town, isn't it? It's like, people would think you're mad, but if you put it in a, a song, somehow they'll listen, you know, it's because in this country, I guess, we're in, you know, there's a lot of things that we're not allowed to say. And people don't realise, but there's a real um, stigma about saying anything political just in normal conversation. You know, it's like to this day, if you're in the pub and you, you say anything political, people are like, oh, don't want to talk about that. It's really strange. But um, so you can put things in songs 
or you know things that you're scared to say to someone's face you can put it in a song you know well a lot of people seem to think that you know we uh, may helped you know not just us but it was part of a, a time that made racism you know unacceptable on a general level I mean when I was growing up you know it was quite commonplace for people to use uh, racial insults in the playground and stuff I mean I'm sure it still goes on but it's it's not nearly as you know it's it's not acceptable in it just in a general all-round way and uh, you know I hope we played a small part in that but obviously it was part of uh, a huge um, movement that was rock against racism but loads of other things obviously you know um, footballers uh, you know it's it's just not acceptable anymore when it was happening it was just phenomenal you know when the early days of two-tone I still I don't know I mean I go to gigs now and the atmosphere is just not nothing like what used to happen at a two-tone gig. It's just, you know, we used to literally raise the roof, you know, kind of, I can remember playing in South End and all these holes started appearing in the, the floor and people were dropping through into the cellar, you know, because I was kind of uh, stomping so much and, I mean, the whole building was like going up and down like this it was just unbelievable I just the energy that was there um, and I don't know it's just weird when I go to gigs now because it's just not remembering that um, I can remember this time we played in uh, Cardiff and I had just the weirdest experience in my life because I was um you know, you're jumping up and down. Normally when you're jumping up and down, you feel like you're going from the floor upwards and then coming down. I felt like I was floating in the air and then going down and touching the floor and then coming back to my natural position about two feet above the ground. I, I can't describe it. It wasn't drugs either. It was just the music. It was just, um, you know, the ska rhythm and that whole reggae thing is some weird African thing that we don't really understand but it's it's just um it's something that 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 is very deep you know that we don't you know that we we tapped into are very lucky to do that you know the special's name came from uh it's embarrassing it was supposed to be sex pistols when you pissed it was supposed to be like sex pistols <laughs> Because <laughs> no, it's true, it's true. Not many people know that, but you do now. <laughs> <laughs>